You are listening to True Crime Twins, a true crime podcast hosted by Chloe and Melina Cantor. True Crime Twins is produced by Crawlspace Media. Hello and welcome back to True Crime Twins. I'm Melina. And I'm Chloe. Thank you so much for listening to another crime story. How are you doing, Chloe? I'm doing pretty well. I'm tired from the week, but I'm really eager to cover this case today. It is something that has been on my mind for a long time now. It deserves all of the attention in the world. And I hope that our discussion will bring this case to many ears. That is the only thing we could ever ask for. We're particularly passionate about cases of injustice, and this is certainly one of injustice. We're talking about the 2017 murder of 22-year-old Bakari Henderson of Austin, Texas, who was murdered by a racist mob when he traveled to Greece. On July 7th, 2017, Bakari and some friends had traveled to Greece because Bakari was launching his clothing line, Bakari Luxury Sportswear. He had recently graduated from the University of Arizona studying business, and he was very confident in his goals and aspiration to launch his line. He was quoted by his father, Phil Henderson, as saying, if you have a plan B, you don't have enough confidence in your plan A. And that was really how Bakari lived his life. He was confident. He was outgoing. His mother, Jill Henderson, said that he made his presence known wherever he was. Everybody loved him. But he turned heads, no doubt. Like, he was handsome. I even just love the name Bakari. It's a beautiful name. And when you said, if you have a plan B, it means you're not confident in your plan A. I'm like, damn. That's somebody that just really is passionate and confident. It really paints a picture of the kind of person he was. The name Bakari, the origin, actually means noble promise. And his family has been so devoted and tireless in getting justice for their son. And that's kind of their noble promise, is that they're following this through. As you said, Bakari was extremely handsome. I was talking about his ambition, his drive, his amazing personality, his intelligence. He had everything going for him. And he had an amazing family that was in his corner, was supporting him. Like I said, his parents, Phil and Jill Henderson. And he had two siblings, PJ and Jory Henderson. And they were a very close-knit family. He spent his childhood traveling the world His mom was quoted as saying that they didn't hire sitters, that they took the kids with them when they went on trips. And it kind of makes sense that he, once he was an adult and had graduated from school, that he took it upon himself to travel to Greece to launch his clothing line. He was comfortable traveling. He was in his element. He was going to take pictures using the beautiful scenery of the country and had his whole plan in place to launch his clothing line. But unfortunately, he couldn't accomplish his goals because his life was so cruelly, so devastatingly cut short by an act of violence, by an act of racism. In criminology, they call it an act of confrontational homicide. Bakari was out with friends, and it was the early morning hours of July 7, 2017. He was socializing, and a 20-year-old white waitress was talking to him. They hit it off, and she asked if they could take a selfie. This is according to witness accounts. He obliged. Surveillance footage shows Bakari leaning into the picture. They take the picture, and then someone approaches them. We see a tense interaction based on the body language in the footage. And then this man hits Bakari in the face. We learn later from witness accounts that this man approaches Bakari and this young waitress and says, there are Serbians in this bar and you're talking to a black man. Immediately, a chill goes down your spine. It's so hateful. It's so confrontational. It's obviously rooted in jealousy, but it's so clearly racist. He thinks that his nationality, his country of origin, his race is superior to that of African-Americans. And Bakari wasn't doing anything directly to insult him. He was just taking a selfie with someone that asked him to. But just existing was enough to offend the sensibilities of this coward. 
and he confronts and hits Bakari. Bakari doesn't immediately retaliate. I think he was probably stunned. I'm sure in his life, just being a black man, I'm sure that he had encountered racism before, but he must have found that so jarring to have someone just be so, so hostile, so hateful, and for it to be so unprovoked. Like he wasn't, he was minding his own business. He wasn't even talking to this man. He was taking in his surroundings. He was hot and charming. So a stranger wanted to take a selfie with him. That's something that I'll never relate to, but I guess that happens to people like him. He literally didn't do anything. It's not like he asked somebody for a selfie. And even if he did, nothing could have warranted that type of hostility and hatefulness. In acts of confrontational homicide, it's typically in a public place. Alcohol is usually involved and there's usually a crowd. So a bar fight is very typical for confrontational homicide where the perpetrator perceives that the victim has slighted them, has disrespected them, has dishonored them. And this is escalated by the fact that it's in front of people. But this is unique because Bakari really wasn't doing anything at all. This person was just offended by Bakari's existence as a black man. And that's what offended his sensibilities. That's what gave him a sense of dishonor. He was jealous that this young lady was giving Bakari attention instead of the, I guess, plentiful Serbian men in this bar. I don't know if it was a bar that specifically was attracting people from Serbia, but there were at least nine Serbian men at this bar. But the confrontation started this way in this act of confrontational homicide. He hits Bakari. Bakari doesn't immediately retaliate, but he eventually does defend himself by striking back. The accounts are conflicting. Some say that he punched him. Some say that Bakari hit him with the bottle that he was holding. Either way, I imagine Bakari must have been absolutely terrified and felt that it was necessary to defend himself in such a way after being confronted this way. But Bakari, as you could see if you watch this video, quickly realizes that he's in a really bad situation. He strikes the Serbian man that confronts him and he runs very quickly. He tries to get away from the situation and he is chased by a mob. It's sickening to hear about. And to me, it's reminiscent of the murder of Ahmad Arbery. It's the same idea of somebody being chased down and murdered. I think what kind of sets it apart is for those who don't know, the perpetrators in the Aubrey case, they were convicted of the additional hate crime charges. But I don't believe that on the footage that was taken that there was any evidence of them specifically targeting him because of his race. But we do know based on witness accounts that Bakari was targeted because he was black. That was what the man said to him initially was, why are you taking pictures with a black man? This angered him and his friends. I don't know what the relationship was of the perpetrators before this night, but there was some kind of unity. And there's honestly few things more terrifying than mob mentality to me when there is groupthink and everyone just gets this cumulative aggression and feel the need to group together and take it out on someone that is completely innocent. And that's what happened that night. At least nine men in their 30s mostly chased 22-year-old Bakari, who had his whole future ahead of him, out of the bar. Bakari is seen on video, body slammed against a car, and they beat him to death. They kick him, and I believe it's within a minute, he's motionless on the ground. A woman eventually stands between Bakari and the crowd with her arms up to shield him from further harm. While the assault is going on, Bakari's friends tried to pull the perpetrators off of him, but they were grossly outnumbered. Bakari was taken to a hospital and was pronounced dead with the majority of his injuries being to his head. I feel sick and I'm holding back tears. When you hear the whole story, it's hard not to feel like you want to throw up. It's a modern day lynching. And what I find most surprising, especially in this day and age where these cases of racist murders are becoming more and more publicized, I don't know if it's because it didn't happen in the United States, but not enough people know the name Bakari Henderson. And this was so cut and dry to me based on the witness accounts, based on the surveillance footage. It's all right there in front of you. But guess what? These men were brought to trial. 
Bakari's family has traveled back and forth to Greece at least five times to try to seek justice for their son, and they were found not guilty of murder. Three of them, I believe, were acquitted completely, and six of them were convicted on a lesser charge of assault. But that obviously is not good enough. These men attacked a helpless person until he died. They were not convicted of murder, and they absolutely should be. The good news is Greece has a unique criminal justice system. As many people know, in the United States, you cannot be tried twice for the same crime. This is the principle of double jeopardy. Once someone has been prosecuted, you can't go back and do it again. That's not the case in Greece. The prosecutor felt that the sentences and the charges were too lenient. And this week, the retrial has begun for six of the perpetrators in the murder of Bakari Henderson. Unfortunately, news broke today that there has been another delay until March 11th. So that means another trip to Greece for this poor family that has suffered so much. They have left Bakari's room untouched. They haven't even unpacked the luggage from their initial trip to Greece when they found out he had died. They had gotten a call from the embassy that night and their world was just completely shattered. I don't even know how they've rallied and how they've been able to be as resilient as they have been. But something amazing that they've done is they've launched Bakari luxury sportswear on their own. Bakari died and he wasn't here to realize his dream. So his family, even in the face of grief, they were able to go ahead and do it for him. And this line is still out there. You can look it up. They're on social media. They have a website and they have really nice clothes. And they're just realizing their son's dream, whose life was cut way too short. They've also formed a foundation called the Bakari Foundation, where they provide travel experiences for family members of people who have been victimized by violent crime. So it's not a basic need, but they're providing life-changing experiences for people who have been absolutely devastated and traumatized. So just seeing that resilience in the face of everything they've been through is truly inspirational. They also have captured the attention and the hearts of some pretty notable figures, including Gail King, who is a journalist that works for Oprah's network, and Vice President Kamala Harris. She saw to it that she would get personal updates regarding the case of Bakari. And now, a quick word from our sponsors. Thanks for listening to our sponsors. Now back to the show. Gail King made the statement that everybody should know Bakari's name. They know Gabby Petito's name. They know Natalie Holloway's name. You know, Natalie Holloway is another person that is an American citizen that was clearly victimized by some sort of violent crime overseas. Everyone knows her name, but many don't know Bakari Henderson's name. And that needs to change. And Bakari absolutely needs justice. The people that so viciously killed him need to be convicted for those charges. Something that really disgusts me is that the Serbian ambassador to Athens, whose name is Dusan Spasovic, he said in a confident statement that this crime was not motivated by race or nationalism and that it was due to excessive alcohol consumption. He was quoted as saying, the accident had nothing to do with the nationalities of the citizens involved. It is very unfair to generalize based on one case and to give such political or nationalist undertones. Excuse me? Have your son be overpowered by a racist mob and tell me that it was an accident. How offensive would that be to Bakari's family? How dare you call it an accident? That was no accident. To be honest with you, people use alcohol as an excuse all the time for terrible, terrible deeds and behavior, including angry outbursts and violent outbursts. But There has to be some sort of hatred within you for that to come out because it brings out the true feelings of people. It wasn't a mistake. It doesn't cause you to change your entire personality, your sense of values, your moral compass. It doesn't do any of that. What alcohol does do is that it dulls your inhibitions, it lessens your sensitivity, and it can make you more prone 
to outbursts, to succumbing to your anger. It doesn't change who you are. These people did not become racist. They did not become violent because they were drinking that night. And this was no accident. And when he says that it's unfair to generalize based on one case, he's more concerned about the reputation of his country being that of generally racist ideals than he is for Bakari getting justice. That's what's unfair is that these men were found not guilty. These people setting a bad example and making a bad name for his country, that's obviously unfortunate. And it is not right to generalize based on the actions of some people. But that should not be the focus here. What's unfair is that Bakari is gone. Bakari's father, Phil, said that if the attackers had gotten to know Bakari, they would have liked him. They're so well-spoken. The fact that he even said that, like, I've, I've never heard someone describe the circumstances of a homicide where there's no victim offender relationship like that, because the truth is, is they didn't know Bakari at all. They saw the color of his skin and they acted based on the emotion it invoked in them. Fear and hatred trumped what could have been a good night getting to know somebody new like that's like the whole fun of traveling is going out and meeting people from different countries and different cultures right and with the racial unrest that has been going on in the united states according to his parents he felt more comfortable in europe than he did in the united states so his guard was probably down these acts of violence these racially motivated acts of hate need to stop. Bakari's brother was a contestant on the recent season of The Bachelorette where Michelle was the lead and watching it and seeing that intro scene where people are getting out of the limo, a very handsome and charming young man pulled up in a fire truck and came out in a tux and was probably the most handsome person I've seen, but I (laughs) immediately followed PJ and scrolled through his feed and found this heartbreaking, gut-wrenching story. And I just couldn't believe that that's how I found out about it. And it's through no fault of his family. They're doing everything they can to raise awareness. His family has done so much media and I can't even imagine how hard that must be. It's just wild that that's how it came to my attention from a stupid reality show. I encourage our listeners here on social media to make posts about him so that other people know his name. I am disappointed that the only reason that I know about this case is because of my guilty pleasure of watching The Bachelor. I should have known this case because it was on the front page of every mainstream media source. Thank you for listening to True Crime Twins. We so appreciate that you're here. And if you enjoy our episodes, please leave us a five-star rating and a review wherever you listen to podcasts. You can also follow us on social media where we're quite active. On TikTok and Twitter, we're at True Crime Twins. On Instagram, at True Crime Twins Podcast. You can also email us with questions, comments, and case suggestions at truecrimetwinspodcast at gmail.com. 